You mean the New Republic? Exactly, the New Republic. Uh, for for Hitchens, it says you and Noam getting along okay. <laughs> Noam Chomsky. Well, Professor Chomsky, who I've long admired and who's written some some wonderful critiques of American foreign policy in the past, has had a, and many many other great scholarly contributions also uh, has had disagreement with me or I with him over whether or not it's decent to suggest that the United States, as it were, uh, deserved or invited the aggression against its civil society on the 11th of September. And I take the very strong view that one shouldn't have any truck with that view. The ne then we, uh, we that go. line, and the he, well, we would quarrel about it. So we, no, I would probably say our relations are not so cordial. New Republic listening to the right? I have no idea. Two I, new I owners, know. both Republicans, both voted for George Bush. I've never met them, um, and I don't know. And uh, my... What I'm told is that the editorial policy remains the same. Cape Cod, no whatever, whatever Cape, that is. Cape, whatever that is. <laughs> Cape, Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Go ahead, please. Good morning. A question for Mr. Hitchens, please. You're going. You're on. Ask away. Do you believe it's healthy for the United States to be so much influenced by Israel? We are a large country. They are very small, but they have much influence in the media and especially in politics thanks well believe me i i know um i believe i understand the question and uh, there are various tones of voice in which it can be asked and including a, a tone of voice that i don't like uh, that suggests that there's a sort of covert jewish hand that directs u.s policy which is not true and uh, very often clusters with other forms of unpleasantness i do think that the United States gives far too great a proportion of its military aid budget to Israel and in return asks for insufficient Israeli responsibility. Uh, the Israelis are the custodians of the West Bank by an, an act of war. Which, their occupation of it is not recognized as legal. I've already said what I think should happen about that. There should be a West Bank state. The United States could make that difference. You could say to the Israelis, we will defend the existence of a Jewish community or a Jewish state in Palestine. We will not underwrite it becoming an expansionist and colonial state. If you want to do that, you pay the difference yourself. That would, that, that alone would have probably solved the, the uh, problem by now. And I do wish, yes, if you want to put it like that, that there was more um, cogent discussion along those lines in both the media and in Congress. Let me simply say that, that um the United States' defense of the only democracy in the Middle East, one that has been threatened many times, attacked many times by neighbors that want it to be extinguished. Um, the United States' support for that little country is one of the reasons I'm proudest of the United States. And, uh, Does that mean you support its defense of the occupation as well? I, I certainly, well I certainly, the, I certainly... There's nothing democratic about the occupation, actually. Well, no, there was nothing democratic about, about the war that was launched upon Israel that resulted in that occupation. Um, People always ignore the fact that these expansions of Israel have come from defensive actions when it's been attacked by its neighbors. 1956. Um, now look, a look, war? look. I want. I I do believe as you do, in a two-state solution. However, I do not believe that one of those states should be a terrorist state financed by Iran and run by terrorists in order to destroy the state of Israel. And uh, I have no axe to grind here. I'm an English Roman Catholic to some ex uh, originally. But I admire Israel, I admire the Israeli people, and I admire their tenacity to defend democracy in the face of exactly the kind of fascism that, that you rightly uh, attack when it hits the United States. Terre Haute, Indiana, home of Eugene, Deb. Eugene Debs, Mr. Yeah. Hitchens' friend. Go ahead, please. Yes, Ryan. Uh, <laughs> I'm so shocked I got on that I hope I can sound very rational in my statement. You'll be fine. But I wanted to tell you that, yes, people who... Uh, have come to this United States uh, and haven't been here for, for uh, very long. Yeah, they think this is the greatest country, but I want to go back. My family has been here for probably six generations, and we, either, we were the ones who came here and helped pick cotton, uh, worked in the factories, built this country up, and now then, uh, year, uh, centuries later, I have a son and daughter, a daughter, who they work harder probably than any uh, uh, president or doctor or lawyer in this country, and yet they can't afford to have uh, health insurance. And my daughter this year has been through hell because she's had 
uh, kidney stones, which were excruciating, and she couldn't hardly get medical treatment for her kidney stones. Now, my family and my generation have paid taxes all these centuries over here, but these two people who come over here and... I'll bet you $10 they have health insurance, and they're rich. And my children, my daughter and her husband, they do their own uh, business. And um, they um, work, like I said, they work from daylight to dawn. Thanks, caller. Got the point. Let me ask Andrew Sullivan, Christopher Hitchens, do you have health insurance? Sure. I have one because I write for the... Nation magazine, and we subscribe to the United Auto Workers uh, Health Program. I'm Sullivan. a member of that. I'm a member of that UAW local. But yeah, but, uh, but, but it's not. I mean, it's, tr it's the same as to say that you have to you have to take care of it yourself. And if you're not lucky enough to be fully employed, you can be as well as unemployed, lacking health coverage. And that's true of maybe 40 million Americans. Yeah. And it's probably the, the most disgraceful f fact about American society. I'm, yes. I'm lucky also. I'm employed by the New Republic, and they also provide me, I'm glad to say, with health insurance. And someone living with HIV on a daily basis, that's something that obviously is of pretty important, pretty great importance to are you, me. Are you rich? <laughs> I, I think the... <laughs> I don't know how you would define that. I'm, uh, I'm certainly oh, not getting... In the getting... sense of worldly goods, I'm <laughs> Don't worry. Don't worry. It's only worldly goods. In the sense of um, what our caller was talking about, she said both of you were had health insurance and were rich. Well, she was trying to relate that to being immigrants. I came here with, 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 uh, with a little scholarship and, and didn't know a soul. Um, but look, this is not... That, the, que the broader question is, is about health insurance. And the truth is that it's clear that given the extraordinary cost now of, of health care and indeed the new technologies of health care, that if you're pretty poor, very poor, in other words, you get Medicaid, or if you're senior, you get Medicare. And if you're working with a decent company, you've also got health insurance. But there's people in the, in the gap in the middle, the working poor, that don't. And I think we have to make better efforts to, to, to solve that. There is, however, not a very easy solution. If you, I come from a country which has socialized health care. Um, and the quality of that care is among the most disgraceful elements of, of that country. And I think if you were to socialize it over here, you would lose many, many, many of the benefits that, that the American health care system now provides. Are you a rich Mr. Hitchens? Yeah, I would say, as most people consider these things, I mean, I make far more money than I ever expected to, and I, I think I'm probably overpaid for some of the work I do. I think I'm underpaid for some of the other stuff. And um, anyway, it means that I can do pro bono things like Isn't this. Isn't it time for me, in the program, for me to ask you whether or not you're a socialist? I think that was, that's a regular question. Yes, well, I hope you see it. You've seen my, uh, what is it, tw 20 years you've been taunting me about this now, and yeah. I, I've, I think I may have refused the question in my own mind for, for, for quite a while, because I wasn't going to give you the satisfaction of saying, well, I'm not sure that really it's a, any more useful thing to say. So today myself. you're going to give us an answer? I would, um, I think that if you ask yourself, is there an international socialist movement? If not, is it going to revive? Um, or if not that, is there at least a valid socialist critique with an alternative of the existing system of globalized capitalism? You ask yourself those three questions, and the answer comes back no, then you can't really usefully say you're a socialist anymore. But I feel it like a missing limb, I'll tell you this that. Is, this is truly a new dawn, Christopher. Finally, it's... But I think you're ducking. About, I've been writing about this for a long time. I know, I know, I know, but... Partly, I... I but look, I you slowed up get, on it probably because I wasn't going to give Mr. Lamb the satisfaction of well, saying uncle on this point. Okay. <laughs> 20 years I'm, of class struggle on this I'm going to try and seize that satisfaction here. Um, but the point is not that you, you keep saying that... You keep saying that this is because of these external reasons. There isn't a viable... Well, it's it's as much as to say that there but, is, but there the is actual, no longer a socialist position to hold. But doesn't it clearly sense. show, aren't you actually intellectually apprised of the belief that, uh, that clearly socialist countries built on socialist models have failed demonstrably to provide higher standards of living, greater creativity and greater freedoms than, than the more free market societies. Well, you should have been present for some of our earlier arguments, Mr. Professor Lamb and myself, in that <laughs> part of one's position was, was what, is it, what does socialism mean and does any country that claims it therefore earn the title, which would be your view, that the noble title of socialist could be claimed by any country that wanted to our own Do country so. was that, that's clearly that, that a socialist would be country from 1945 to 1979, and it ruined the United much. Kingdom, ruined it, immiserated it, uh, depressed it, uh, and it only, only Thatcher managed to, to save the place from what was going to be ruined.